Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Sean and in today's video we are revisiting Autogeist. I got a message from, I'm sorry I forgot the subscriber's name, if they are subscribed to the channel and I was asking for the debt profile for this and so I thought why not take the opportunity to revisit Autogeist and uh, let's play a game and then at the end of this video is going to be the debt profile so if you want to skip ahead and see what cards I use you feel free to but this uh, gameplay video is going to do a really good job of showing you what this deck does in action. Uh, really fun duel this one was. So, uh, to start off with, I'm going first, which is what you always want as an Orgaz play player because you're playing trap cards. And we have normal summon Metal Seek and send it to the graveyard for the late summon of Link Karibo in order to use her effect, which is you can add any Orgaz monster from your deck to your hand. Now, because normally you want to go for a card that you can use during your opponent's turn. So, um, normally the card you're going to go for is Autogeist Multi Faker, but I was very, very fortunate to be able to open with the card this t time, and so I didn't have to search that out. So, the next card which I'm going to go for is Autogeist Kunkiri, because she has an attack stopping effect, which I will be able to use if I can get another Autogeist monster to the field. So, Bushman, as his avatar and his deck is now suggested to me, is he is playing Salaman Great, and uh, Salaman Great is a deck, very very powerful deck, a very versatile deck and Auto Guys vs Salomon Great is one of the classic matchups uh, of the Reigns era, they're both incredibly good decks and I would say that this is uh, like a very very much a 50-50 game where it comes down to the quality of the skills of the players to see who can win and with uh, Salomon Great, the best thing you can do is if possible is stop them from going off to begin with they are very very much reliant on their normal summon so if you can stop the effect of their normal summon it's very, very good to do so. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm actually committing a lot of resources just to counter this Lady Debug. First, I use Ash Blossom to stop him searching out any uh, Cyburst monsters that are level 4 or lower to, uh, from Lady Debug's effect. And then I activate a Trap card to summon Batman Mana Seek, which allowed me to trigger Multi Faker's effect. Multi Faker then allow me to uh, summon Silk Quitters from my deck, and then I use Silk Quitters to return Manifestation from my field to my hand and the Lady Debug. So now, Bushman has to ask himself, does he have an extender in his hand to get another monster to the field? If he can get one other monster to the field, he's fine. But if not, then he's pretty much just going to have to pass turn because Salamon Great cards are so very much dependent on having monsters on their field. And he has got the perfect extender. He's got Widow the Salamon Great. And if you've never seen Widow the Salamon Great, he has two effects. An effect that he's using right now is that he can special summon one monster that Salomon Great from his hand or the graveyard to the field. It's like a, it's like a Monster Reborn. Um, it's also like a, is it Dark Magic Veil? The Dark, uh, the Spark Spellcaster card um, that I play in Dark Magicians. But it's also very, very much like Soul Charge. This card can uh, summon back um, a whole lot of monsters if he has a reincarnated Salomon Great monster on the field. And uh, I will be uh, actually showing you off some Salomon Crates in the near future. I've got a video already prepared for it. So you'll be able to see how this deck it works in action. And if you want to see some Salomon Crates and you want to see me play and get a deck profile for it, let me know. I'll be happy to share one for you. That video is actually ready. I've just been fulfilling other deck requests in the meantime. So Bushman managed to get a Salomon Crate boss on this field and played Raikeki, which was mean. And um, by doing so, he linked it off for a link one called Salomon Crate Bay Links. Balix then has the effect where she can search out your field spell and then um, he was able to summon back the spinny from his graveyard using its own effect because it can summon itself back to the field if you control a Salomon Great face up card. Now he has used both the spinny and the Balix to go into their link 2 which is Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf and in this game link 2's are often the edging cards for a lot of key decks. Things like Orcust, um, Scrap, uh, I'm trying to think of another deck that's not Salomon Great, I uh, can't think of one. But um, they are often the engine cards for the main deck, they're, they're often the, the big extenders for the deck. And Sunlight Wolf is not the exception to that. Now Sunlight Wolf has two effects. Um, it has a, a normal effect and it also has like a hidden reincarnated effect. And how that uh, reincarnated effect is accessed is if it is linked summoned using a copy of itself from the field uh, to the graveyard. And so what he has used here is he's used this special ability of his field spell in order to send one copy of Sunlight Wolf to summon another Sunlight Wolf. And that's the whole goal with uh, Salomon Grace is that they get benefits off of having this reincarnated Link Summon effect. 
Uh, it's called Reincarnation Summon in the, uh, in the uh, anime. Um, although in the game it's, uh, it doesn't really have a particular name for the mechanic. Um, it just says uh, it just says what it does in plain text. But um, yeah, uh, that's where the goal of Summon Great. So over to my turn here now. We've normal summoned our old class Marionetta, who is another really, really good edgy card for my deck. And Marionetta, when it, she is normal summoned, allows us to get any old guys card from my deck and set it to my field. Now, um, Bushman is now going to use his effect, and he, he's going to use Salmon Great Rage's effect, which is you target one monster that you control that was reincarnated summon, and you can destroy cards on the field equal to its link rating. So because Salmon Great Starlight Wolf was reincarnated summon and has a link rating of 2, he gets to destroy 2 cards. But fortunately, uh, I still have my Marionetta, and uh, Marionetta has a Monster Reborn style effect. You send any old guys card from your field to the graveyard, but that's a monster that is. Oh, it might be card, I can't remember actually. And then you can summon any level 4 or lower old guys monster from your graveyard back to the field. So we summon back Multifaker, which is then going to trigger Multifaker's effect. Multifaker is then going to let us search out an old guys monster from our deck and summon it to the field. And this was my mistake here. I forgot that it summons in defense, so I went for Melaseek thinking I could attack with it this turn, which is unfortunate. But that's not the end of the world. Um, I should have gotten Silk Whips. Silk Whips would have been better here. But that's fine. We're now going to use it to go into our leak summon. And that is Autogeist Hextia. Hextia is really the only extra deck monster you need for Autogeist. And she is a powerful one in that. But first, Manaseek is going to activate. Because she was sent from the field to the graveyard. And add one more Autogeist monster from our deck to our hand. As you can see there, we are running out of all guys monsters from our deck. We don't really play that many in an all guys deck. We only play like 10 or so. Uh, maybe even less than that because um, you normally play free Melaseek. But unfortunately, because uh, we are using a combination of the OCG and TCG ban list, Melaseek is at 2 rather than 3 in the TCG. And so we've set up all, all guys next year and now we've just passed our opponent. So Bushman is now going to normal summon his Lady Debug that I returned to his hand earlier on to try and add a card from his deck to his hand. And we are going to respond with all guys manifestation. Again, summoning a all guys card from our graveyard to the field. And so we are going to go with Multifaker again. And Multifaker is going to hit the field and then Multifaker's effect is going to trigger getting us another monster from our deck. Lady Debug is going to resolve and um, he is going to go for Salomon Great Gazelle, one of the most important cards for Salomon Great. Um, not as amazing as it used to be because um, certain cards got hit by the ban list and um, a Gazelle isn't. Um, Gazelle used to go into a rank 3 uh, called um, Salomon Great. Uh, I forgot what it's called there, rank 3. Oh my god, I'm Mirage Stadium. And uh, because that card got banned, um, yeah, it's not as uh, useful as it once was as a standard, or not as necessary, but it's still very powerful nonetheless. So, Silka is his return by manifestation to my hand, and we're going to get rid of one of his cards to return it back to his hand. So I go for Sunlight Wolf here. He is going to be able to extend further, but what I'm trying to do to stop Bushman here is, I'm trying to stop him to get to his high level elite, elite monsters, so I'm trying to just slow him down and slow down the tempo a little bit here, if it's possible. So we are, we are, uh, Salomon Greats are really well known for doing what we call link climbing. They start at link 1, which is their bay links, they go to link 2, which is Sunlight Wolf, and then you go to 3 and 4, and you just keep on going. And, um, well, 4 is the maximum, 4 is the highest card that they can get to. So, uh, they're really good. So anytime you can kind of, like, interrupt their ladder chain, um, it can slow them down a little bit. But he has Will of the Salomon Great, and Salomon, Will of the Salomon Great will let him bring back any Salomon Great monster from his uh, graveyard back to the field. And now he has a Link 1 and a Link 2 in the field, so he's going to skip the step of going to a Link 2, and he's going to go straight into Link 3, which is going to be unfortunate for me. Um, I'm not going to really be able to slow him down too much. So he summons that Sun, uh, Salomon Great Heat Meal. Helio has a really, really cool effect there, and um, has a really cool effect too. Now, um, Hextia also has a really cool effect. Hextia is able to negate the activation of the Spell and Trap card, or the effect of a Spell and Trap card, and I should have actually negated his um, Salaman, Will of the Salaman Great card, but for some reason I just chose not to, and I'm going to pay for that mistake shortly. 
Um, he t uh, Sunlight Wolf, when, not Sunlight Wolf, Heat Neo, when it is Link Summoned, can target one Spell and Trap card in the Spell and Trap zone on my side of the field and shuffle it back into the deck. And he targets my face down Metaverse, and so I chain with it to go get Mystic Mine. And uh, um, while we have two both the same number of monsters in the field, we can both still use monster effects. But if he puts out one more bots on the field and he exceeds my monster count, he is going to be locked out of his monster effects. And so I'm hoping, hopefully, that this can just slow him down a little bit here because um, I am not in a really, very really good position overall. He now uses the effect of Jack Jaguar. Celebrate Great Jack Jaguar is a graveyard effect. You can shuffle back one uh, card, uh, Celebrate Great Monster, from your graveyard back into the deck. That could be an extra deck monster too. So he shuffled his Starlight Wolf and summoned it back to the field to a zone a, a, a Celebrate Great Monster points to. And now we're going to see the Celebrate Great Link 4, Pyro Phoenix. Pyro Phoenix is a really, really good card and really, really annoying. And, it, and this card says if this card is Link Summoned, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls. So he is not going to have to worry about um, um, my Mystic Mine at all. He's going to be able to destroy all my cards and then do a buttload of damage. And uh, yeah, Salamon Greats are a really, really fun deck. Um, I really, really strongly suggest that players in real life, if you want to get back into the game, learn this deck. It will give you such a good grounding and such a good footing on understanding how link mechanics work and also it gives you a deck which kind of has an answer for every situation. Salamon Greats can link climb really well, they don't have to stick to their own link monsters, they can go to other link monsters if you want to, they can negate, they have a spell and trap removal, they can destroy all cards on the field, they have attack modification, they can shuffle cards on the field, they can recur cards from the graveyard, it is just a really 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 well designed deck. and. Um, I always link it to fighting games. I always talk about fighting games with uh, when I talk about Yu-Gi-Oh deck. But uh, Salamon Great uh, or Soul Burner, the character from uh, Yu-Gi-Oh of Raids in Bushman's Avatar, he's very, very much like the Ken of uh, of uh, the Raids anime. Uh, in that, uh, if Ryu is like the most balanced character, um, Ken was always like. Uh, a little bit more attack based and so Salamon Greats are kind of like that. They're very very balanced but also they have a, quite a bit of power too where they can kind of just kill you very quickly. Now it's over to my turn here and fortunately we still do have a lot of cards to play although we are on the back pedal here and we've lost a lot of life and so we're going to try to rebuild our board and try to set up some more disruption and so we normal summon Marionetta, got protocol, we set free and we're now going to use Marionetta's effect to get back a card from our graveyard. Marionetta is such a good card. Being able to get cards from your deck and then get cards from your graveyard allows you to use your deck as a uh, and your graveyard almost as a toolbox where you're going to play the game and you're going to keep on grinding but eventually once all your key cards are out of your deck you need to get them back from your graveyard and so between marionetta um, manifestation silk Ritters, and um those are the three main ones between those three main cards you can constantly get back cards from your graveyard for the situation that you need and the one i've just got is melaseek so melaseek attacks directly and when she does damage she only does a little bit of 500 damage but she can then target and send any card on the field to the graveyard and this is really really important when you're playing against salamon gray and why auto geist is a good matchup for salamon gray because Salomon Great's uh, Bailings, the Link 1, has the effect that if any of their cards would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. It's kind of like the spell card uh, Return of Dragon Souls, uh, or Dragon Lords, where you can summon a dragon level 7 or level 8 from your graveyard, but then when it's in the graveyard, it will protect your card from being destroyed. It's like that, very, very much like that. But because Menaceek doesn't destroy... It sends cards from the, from the field to the graveyard. She can just ignore that effect and kind of bypass the armor of Salamon Great in total. Now, for me to really recapture this duel, we're going to have to put some serious pressure on Bushman here. And so I've used Infinite Impermanence to negate his Salamon Great Foxy, but also to negate the column that Sal that was in and negate the effect of Will of the Salamon Great. And the only way he can use Will of the Salamon Great now is if he uses his other effect. Although I think he leaves the field negated, so it doesn't matter anyway. So now he's going to go for a link 2 for Sunlight Wolf and he's going to try to link climb again back into his higher monsters 
and uh, we are going to be prepared for that. We are going to get rid of this monster ASAP. So now we activate Manifestation, and Manifestation is going to let us build, bring back all guys Silquitus. So Silquitus comes to the field and summon it to the field, and then we're going to use her effect to get rid of this Sunlight Wolf and bounce it back, and then really ask ourselves, what can you else can you do? How many more extenders do you have to play to climb into your key cards? And um, I don't really think he has many. Um, he can't use Jack Jaguar, even though it's still in this graveyard, because he needs to have a zone. He needs to have a, a celebrate link boss on the field to be able to summon it back. He doesn't have Spinny, so he doesn't really have any more monsters he can summon. And so we successfully managed to break his board and reduce his resources down. And now we have the advantage in terms of card advantage. I have five cards on the field and three cards in my hand for a total of eight cards, where he has one, two, three, four cards and a few cards in his graveyard where he can reuse again and again. So we are in a nice position. This is what All Guys likes to do. All Guys likes to endure, tire your opponent out, whittle down their resources, simplify the game state as I talked about in my Weevil Underwood video. Um, go check that out, Giant Ball Part deck. And uh, once you simplify the game state, we are just going to snowball and continuously get rid of your resources and gain more resources so you just can't keep up. So we attack this turn, we still only do little bits of damage. We did 1300 damage this time, but we got to get rid of uh, Will of the Salamigrate thanks to Auto Guys uh, Meloseek. And now I want to get Manifestation back to my hand so that I can then choose a different monster for my graveyard to use in my next turn. I also don't, uh, I'm also going to set some cards, so I want to kind of mix up which position it's in. So if my opponent tries to destroy it with like a, a top deck twin twister, then he won't be able to. Um, we'll have to watch out for Lightning Storm here, man. If he has Lightning Storm, that would really, really hurt in this situation. So, Bushman uh, draws a fourth card, activates Salamigate Sanctuary, and um, I'm going to chain with Protocol because I need, I want, I have multiple protocols on the field. And in order to use Protocol's effect, you have to send a face-up uh, Salamangrate uh, all guys cards from your field to the graveyard. So, I always want one face-up on the field, and I don't necessarily want to get rid of Meloseek. I kind of want to keep Protocol on the field. He's now going to activate Salamangrate Mirror, and this is where I start to think, okay, you know what? I can definitely beat this guy. His deck is not optimized. His deck is not playing correct ratios. Um, no one ever uses Salam Great Mare. Salam Great Mare is a terrible card. It's an extender, sure, but it's not. It doesn't really help you that much. No one really plays this card. Um, also, um, rule number one with Salam Greats is you never really play more than one copy of Salam Great Sanctuary, the field spell. And Bushman, as he's about to reveal here, he's actually played three copies of it because uh, he's going to use Bailey's effect. And he's got one in his graveyard that he just discarded, one in the field, and one in his hand. And you don't need that many. You really, really don't. No competitive player ever plays three copies of it. And the reason why is because of Sunlight Wolf's effect, where you can get cards back from your graveyard and add to your hand. So if you really need to use it again and again, you can recycle it. But then again, your deck has so many extenders, you don't have to use the field spell in order to get to your higher monsters. And so it's just a really inefficient sign that my opponent's kind of played inefficiently. He's playing really well, don't get me wrong. He's playing very, very well. But... He is an optimized his deck, and that is where I'm going to be able to capitalize and uh, make a comeback here. So um, we're going to restrict him from his resources. So right now, what I'm thinking to myself is, what interaction does my opponent have? His field spell card's not doing anything right now. He's got a field spell card in his hand, which means nothing. So he's got a Bailix that has no real relevant effect. So he's only got one card in his hand, and whatever's in his graveyard. And I have way more interaction than just two cards, so I'm very comfortable right now. So he tried to use Jack Jaguar's effect, and I negated it with Protocol. And now he's going to try to use Foxy's effect. Go ahead, he's going to discard one to summon Foxy back to the field, and then he can destroy a face of spell and trap card. I'm not going to negate this, I'm actually going to let this go through, uh, because I have uh, other ways to deal with Foxy. Well, I'm not really too worried about dealing with Foxy right now. And um, yeah, Foxy hits the field, destroys the face of spell and trap card, so he's going to get rid of my other Protocol for certain and then we'll see what play he goes for he can either go for a sunlight wolf and make another link two and then hope it survives or he could try to attack with these two monsters here either way i'm very comfortable with the situation so yep he's gonna go for sunlight wolf go for a link two that's what i would do too 
So, I mean, going for Silent Wolf in this situation isn't terrible because he's got three Bailings in his graveyard now. So, he's got three ways to protect it. But my cards aren't going to destroy it. I have ways to deal with his card without destroying it. And so, here comes the loop again. We're going to activate Manifestation, grab our Silk Quitters. Silk Quitters hits the field. And then Silk Quitters is going to bounce as she is known to do. Going to use her effect. And we are going to get rid of the Sunlight Wolf and send it back to the extra deck because we don't need to deal with this monster right now. Just goodbye, see you later. And uh, yeah, excuse me for a second, we'll take a drink. Ah, market's dry when you talk this much. So, 20 minutes into the game, and we are continuing on, and I managed to top deck into Part of Extravagance, which kind of works as a bomb, because in this deck it's just like draw two, and um, yeah, this is just going to help us gain more resources, and even though my monsters are small, we're going to have to need several turns to kind of whittle him down, um, I'm feeling very, very comfortable about this situation. Uh, we draw into Solemn Strike, which is okay, because um, we don't really have many life points left, and so we're going to go to Normal Summon Menacing, go to Battle Phase, and we're going to now attack directly, do another measly 1300 damage in total, but we'll get rid of his Field Spell. And at this point now, um, I'm in a game-winning position, because we know what the other card in his hand is, don't we? Um... The other card in his hand is Salomon Great Sanctuary, and without his monsters, it isn't doing a whole lot on its own, so we are very, very happy and very comfortable here. And so, um, at this point, I'm thinking about what to do, and am I going to extend? I could make another Hextia, but we don't need to. We're just going to keep on, as long as we can maintain our resource count, we are very, very cool here, and uh, we pass over to Bushman. So... Pushman draws one card. Whatever this card is, is it's got to be good because um, I have a ton of interruptions. So it is Jack Jaguar. So he normally summons his Jack Jaguar. And um, let's see what he tries to do with it. He can't make Bay Links because he's used all of his Bay Links up. And he's going to try to go to Battle Phase. And so we're just going to get rid of Jack Jaguar. Say goodbye, son. We're not going to deal with you right now. Return the Manifestation. Bounce it back to the hand. And get the Manifestation back for later on. And um, Silk Quitters will activate. I didn't use her effect here, which was stupid. Um, that's a mistake here. I could have gotten back a protocol for my graveyard, which would have been nice. But um, it's okay. I have so many cards in terms of advantage, I'm not too worried. So, over to um, turn 11. Draw for turn, and I get my copy of Terraforming. This is, again, really, really good. It means that we're going to be able to get one of our big auto win buttons. And so we can either, uh, we've already used Mystic Mine, so we're going to go and grab Secret Village of the Spellcasters and lock our opponent up from using these spell cards. Meaning any card that he draws now really, really is going to be Field of Pressure because he won't be able to use his uh, Field Spell. He won't be able to use any other spells. So if he top decks into that Will of the Sal uh, Sanctuary, uh, Will of the Salamon Great, it won't help him. And now he has to rely on the monster effects, which we can just constantly bounce. And then he's got the trap cards, which take a turn to activate, so we can stop those too. So, very, very comfortable with the situation we are in. Attack directly with uh, uh, Menaseek. Nothing to send to the graveyard, so uh, we pass the turn to our opponent. And now you may be thinking, um, Menaseek doesn't do a whole lot of damage, does she? She takes quite a few turns to get going. Um... And uh, yeah, it, that is the case, but there is ways, there are ways, I should say, to do a whole lot of damage with this deck. And I'm going to teach you how to do that in just a moment. But first, it is Bushman's turn here, and he goes to try to activate Salamon Great Foxy uh, to also destroy a spell card on my field, so he wants to destroy my Sanctuary. We play uh, sort of Strike, because I'm not really scared of taking any damage from my opponent right now, and um, so we are down to 100 life points. Uh, Falco is sent to the graveyard. Falco has a graveyard effect that it can get back any Salamon Great card from your graveyard. That is also another way to recover your Sanctuary, so that's why you don't play multiple Sanctuary, you can just recur it. Kind of like uh, how I am doing with my Manifestation, where I can just reuse it again and again. He sets it to the field, but right now he can still not activate it, because he doesn't have a spell cast on his field. And so, he normal summons Jack Jaguar, he is hoping, he's praying to get rid of my Melisig. If he can, one, he will win the game, but two, he can also then use his spell cards again. But, um, so he goes to battle face, he attacks, and we are now going to use the card that's been sitting in my hand for a long time, Autogeist Kukiri. 
All guys can kill me has a great effect. If your monster, if your opponent's monster attacks and you control a face up all guys card, you can summon her to the field and negate the attack. You can then choose a card on your opponent's field and negate its effects. And so that's not really doing anything, but yeah, she's a really cool and lovable card. She can just constantly um, negate your uh, opponent's attacks and protect your cards, which is why I don't care about leaving Mana Seeking attack because my opponent is not ready to deal with this. So Manifestation, uh, I'm going to use in my end phase. Uh, we're going to get about one more card. And like I said, we're going to try and set up a bit more damage to speed this up because we don't want to give my opponent the time to find a way to counter my resources. So um, we need to kind of like start hitting the game. So we get back Marionetta to the field. Uh, you may notice I didn't go for Silquits this time and that is because I want Marionetta to the field in order to do her special summon effect in my next turn. And so, um, and this is the kind of like plays that will come when you practice with this deck and come with experience. I didn't find these kind of moves like obvious to begin with, but then as I played this deck, it started to like feel more natural. I started to realize how I can utilize these cards to their full potential. And um, so what we're doing here is we summon Marionetta and we are going to trade our Meliseek for a Silquitus. So uh, Meliseek is going to go to the graveyard, Silquitus is going to come to the field, and Meliseek is now going to activate. This is going to let me get my final Autogast monster from my deck and add it to my hand. So that is another 1600 attack body onto the field. And so we're going to now normal summon Marionetta. I think I may have used all my effect, all my track cards. I've got used all my Autogast cards in my deck, so I can't do any more searching. And now what we're going to do is use Silkwit's effect to return Kunkiri to the hand because she's not doing anything she, she, uh, right now and return back his card. So right now we have 3200 in total plus the 800, we have 4000 damage. Not quite enough to go for game and we can still push our damage just a little bit higher and go a little bit more. And thankfully we still have one copy of All Guys XDR in our extra deck and that's what's going to help us uh, finish this game here. So XDR has a really cool effect. As well, she can also negate spell effects and trap effects. She also gets an effect where she can take the attack of a monster that she is pointing to and add it to her own. So because she starts off with 1500 and she's pointing to the 1600 Silquitters, she gets to become 3100. And between 3100 and 1600, that is going to be in total, do my math, 4700 damage. So this deck can do damage when it's ready to, just got to set it up. And so here we go, we attack the game, and um, yeah, this was a really, really cool game, really, really fun game. And so now, let's get into the deck profile here. Right, so here comes my all guys deck profile, um, somewhat in detail, I'm not going to say what everything does in this deck because you've seen it in action already, but let's break down these cards by their roles. So we have 12 starters for this deck, uh, 3 copies of Marionetta, searches your all guys trap cards and sets it to the field. Uh, Merlisig is your main starter, it adds any Autogast monster from your deck to your hand when she is sent from uh, field to the graveyard and to help her get to the field quicker we have one for one. Uh, be careful with one for one, it is very easy to ash this card and you, if you do if you do uh, find this card gets ash you are losing two cards so be careful when you use this one. Uh, Pot of Duality also is not that great but also kind of like a necessary evil. Um, you really, really do need to get to your starters ASAP. If you can get to uh, Menaceek, Marionetta and or uh, Multifaker, you are singing happy. But you never want to be in a situation where you say have five uh, solemn judgments, uh, five solemn cards and can't play the game or just have to kind of sit and wait too hard or something. So we play a card like Pot of Duality to help us dig through our deck, get to our key cards sooner, but you do lose your special summon. So yeah, be careful with this one. Pot of Extravagance is really, really great. Draw two. Um, terraforming and Met Met Metaverse help us get to our really powerful field spells. And then we also play three copies of Link Karibo and three copies of Al Mirage to help send Melo Seek to the graveyard. So that if you don't have any other way to send it to the graveyard that's more beneficial, you can just normal summon her, send it to the Link her off, and then you get her effect for free. Uh, extenders. Uh, extenders, we have Kukiri, uh, summons herself to the field. Marionetta summons monsters back from your graveyard. Melo Seek adds cards from your deck to your hand, monsters from your deck to your hand. Multifaker summons decks, uh, monsters from your deck to the field, and Silquitters recycles your auto guys trap cards when she is sent from the field to the graveyard. A very, very important to manage her very well with Manifestation in order to recycle and loop these cards so you can constantly use your graveyard as a toolbox and get cards back that you need. 
metaverse and then also personal smoothing uh, work as extenders as well personal smoothing is also very costly like one for one it the cost is to shuffle one auto guys card from your hand or field to the uh, deck and then you if it resolves you get to add an auto guys monster from your deck to your hand again if this gets hit by ash or if it gets destroyed by something like mystical space typhoon you are going to go neg quite hard and so be very careful when using a card like this all the extra deck monsters also function as extenders as well. When Hexia is sent from field to the graveyard, she adds a all guys card from your uh, deck to the hand. Uh, Prime Banshee does the same thing, but from graveyard to your hand. And Kadolga is like Prime Banshee, but it has to be destroyed by a battle to add a card from your graveyard to your hand. I don't really use these cards. I'll talk more about that later on. Uh, removal, uh, Menacing. Menacing is your main form of removal. Really, really amazing card. Attacks directly, sends any card that you can target on the field to the graveyard. If this card wasn't targeted, uh, this card would be the ultimate form of removal because then it would be able to deal with pretty much every single threat in the game. But as long as the card doesn't have targeted immunity, you can send it to the graveyard with her effect. So she is just really, really good. And she's recyclable, so you can get her back again and again and again. Seal Quitters is also incredibly recyclable. Uh, we we'll target one all guys card you control and bounce any card on your opponent's field to the hand. Very, very annoying to deal with. One of your main forms of disruption during your opponent's turn and also recyclable. And then we play three copies of Compulsory Evacuation Device. Target one monster on the field and return it to the hand. The reason why I like to play Compulse over other cards, say Crackdown and Torrential Tribute, it always often varies. It's a very much a meta call. Um, the reason why I like this card is because you have so many cards in your main deck which are trigger effects where you have to wait for your opponent to do something in order to activate them and um, so having something which you can just use almost instantly is very very nice particularly when you want to trigger effects like multi faker where you just want to say I want to use a trap card right now and then I can get multi faker's effect off. If you have to wait too long, sometimes it can make things a little bit awkward so that's why I like compulse and it's also just really good form of removal. And then we have Nightmare Phoenix in the extra deck. Uh, this might get bumped up to three, and I'll talk about all that later. But yeah, Nightmare Phoenix, just spell and trap removal. Uh, don't really make it though. Defense. You play a lot of defense in all guys. Kukiri uh, protects your monsters from being from uh, from an attack by negating the attack. Also can negate a face up monster, a face up card on the field that your opponent controls. So really, really beneficial. Uh, things that people don't realize with Kokiri is she is not a hard once per turn. So if you use her with Silkwits on the field, you can negate an attack, bounce her back to your hand, negate another attack. And as long as you can keep on recycling her back to your hand, you can just abuse the hell out of this card. I've seen players uh, negate five attacks with for this card, just between this card, Silkwits, and say Compulse. Silkwits, yeah, defense, we talked about that already. It's quick effect. Ash Blossom, yep, amazing defense. Protocol, Old Guys Protocol negate, uh, send any Old Guys card from your field to the graveyard to negate a monster effect, a very powerful form of disruption and also protects your Old Guys cards from being negated. So if they choose to ash your cards while this card is on the field or any, any kind of similar negation effect, they cannot be negated. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Compulse, yep, defense, you can use it reactively. Imperial Order, another win button for the deck. In fact, that shouldn't really be here, but whatever, I'll leave it here. Yeah, negate all spells. You don't really care about spell cards, but after like turn one, so yeah, you're very happy to negate all spell cards. Infinite Permanence, negate monster effects, and also negate spell and trap effects if it's set. Uh, Metaverse can be used reactively to get one of your big field spell bombs. And then you've got the Solemn Package, where we have free Solemn Judgment, just pretty much say no to anything by half of your life points. Solemn Strike, the gate monster effects and special summons, and then one Solemn Warning. Yeah, you can play more if you wanted to, but uh, I think seven is enough. And then Hexia is also a form of defense. Her main purpose is that she can tribute a all guys monster that she points to, and uh, she can stop a spell or trap effect, or uh, activate an effect of a spell or trap card as a quick effect. So yeah, she is a counterpart to Protocol. Between Protocol, having one monster in the field and Hexia, you have spell negation, trap negation, and monster effect negation. Bombs. Uh, we have a few bombs. They're kind of like auto win buttons. Uh, Mixed it mine. Yeah, uh, just an all win button. Sometimes, not always. Uh, you do like to have multiple monsters in the field, so you have to play around this card a little bit, but there are going to be situations where this card just stops your opponent from doing anything and yeah, it's worth having. 
Secret Village of the Spellcasters is very much like that, but instead of stopping monster effects and attacking, it stops your opponent from using spell cards, and you don't really care about not using spell cards either, so yeah, Secret Village of the Spellcasters are nice. And then you've got your searches, and then Imperial Order, which we spoke about earlier on as well. And then Hexia. Hexia is also just a really, really good card at being able to pump damage into your opponent and go for game because of her effect that she, when she points to a card, a little guy's card, she can take the attack of that card and add it to herself. You saw me do this in the duel to uh, to kind of take off half my opponent's life points, but uh, she can get to uh, 3100 attack easily. And then, um, yeah, she's just really, really good at pumping the damage. If you get multiple of her on the field, you can even OTK your opponent with this card, but it doesn't happen all the time. And so that is my auto guy's deck build. Uh, so I've got really run through the cards. We have uh, monsters. We have one Kakiri, three Marionetta, two Melaseek, one Multi Faker, and two Silquitus, two Ash Blossom for hand traps, uh, one Mystic Mind, one One for One, one Pot of Duality, three Extravagance, one Village, and one Terraforming for our spell cards. For traps, we play one Manifestation. Some people like to play two. If you are not used to this deck, I might recommend putting two of this into your deck until you know how to manage, uh, manage this as a resource really well. But uh, otherwise, you optimally do not need this at uh, more than one. Protocol at three is an absolute must. Compulse uh, at three, one Imperial Order, three Impermanence, one Metaverse, uh, uh, Personal Smoothing at two, uh, Solemn Judgment at three, three Strike, and one Warning. And for the extra deck, the necessary cards are definitely Hexia, Link Repos, and your Almirage. Um, I might actually add more of these because I don't really use these cards. I don't find they very useful. And so you've got some play room with your extra deck, some wiggle room to kind of mess around with it. You don't need free Phoenix if you don't want to. Um, you can maybe play like a super polarization package for your extra deck. Let's say you don't really want to play Mystic Mine or Compulse or Secret Village. Or, uh, yeah, there, there's a very commonly easy cards that I can swap out one for one as well, Pot of Duality. Maybe you want to play something like Super Polarization and have some ways to kind of get rid of your opponent's monsters in that way. Or something like Predator Plant Verti and a card now you might want to put in your extra deck and so you can get other fusion spells. Maybe you want to do something like Neil's Fusion or something crazy so you've got that really big powerful effect. It's up to you. Really feel free to mess around. This stuff is just, uh, not even the Nightmare Phoenix, just these nine cards you have to have. Anything else is really up to you. And so that is my all guys deck profile. Um, thank you guys for tuning into this video as always. Um, I always love visiting competitive decks, and so being able to revisit all guys was really really fun to do. And I hope you guys have learned something from this. And uh, thank you as always for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care.